Hey everyone, in this video we will learn how to host and attend in Google Cloud Platform for absolutely free with an SSL certificate. First, I'll give you a quick walkthrough of what Anytend is. So, Anytend is a powerful open source workflow automation tool that allows you to do repetitive tasks across multiple apps like Slack, Sheets, Salesforce, Teams, and more, right? You can connect hundreds of apps and services. You can build your custom logic. You can even create your AI agent, right? So, and I think you obviously know what Anytend is. So um, that is why you want to, you, you are watching this hosting video. Um, so I will not waste much time and let's get started. So to host Anytend, there are uh, three ways. First, you can host in their cloud, but it's very expensive. It's around 50, uh, 50 euro a month. Um, second, you can host it in your local machine. But the problem with that is that you won't get an SSL certificate and some apps like Google Sheets and Slack won't connect. Also, you can't keep your system open for extended periods, right? So that uh, is, is not doable. Then the best way is self-hosting. And I believe the best right now is Google Cloud. So Google Cloud offers $300 free credits for three months. What I generally do is once those three months are over, I use a different email ID for my sandbox instance. Um, and I do uh, have a billing activated in another account, but that is for production. For testing, I use these 300 credits a lot. And also, Google Cloud offers a free E2 micro VM instance, which will fulfill all your needs, right, uh, for related to N8 and then automation. If you are within these uh, limits, right, I leave a link in the description. You can go through this page. And if you are within these limits, it will be free for lifetime. So do check it out. Uh, now, I've written a detailed uh, documentation. If you can follow this step by step, you'll be able to successfully create uh, or host an instance in Google Cloud. So let's go through it step by step. I'll make sure I have a project open and I'll go into the compute engine and click on VM instance. The first step is to create a VM instance. And if you're looking for a lifetime free E2 instance, then select the E2 version only. It will be free, uh, but I'll go for N1 version. For E2, you have to select E2 Micro. And uh, because I want to install AppSmith Flowwise in many other applications, I would go with N1. I'll select a 2V CPU. Next, I'll uh, change the OS to Ubuntu. You can leave it to De uh, Debian as well, but I am more comfortable using Ubuntu, so I will select Ubuntu. Uh, this type I will change to SSD persistent disk because uh, I want to again want to install a lot of VMs and I'll keep it at 100 gigs and uh, 10 gigs will be sufficient if you only want to use it for any 10 uh, purposes right now another important step here go into networking and allow HTTPS and HTTP traffic and also road parents are health checks because uh, we'll be calling it from the other IPs outside now, uh, this will take some time creating the instance. So, we have completed these three steps now. Another one is this uh, static IP address, which is the optional, right? So, what I want to do is I want to call the NTN instance from my domain, which is mydomain.com. Uh, if I go into that domain, NTN instance will work. If I want to open it through my domain, I need a static IP, which does not change uh, time and time, right? Because Google external IP will change if I restart my machine and um, it can happen. Right? So I don't want to uh, uh, change that, right? So I'll create a static IP, but again, it's optional and it then would work without as well. So once the VM is successfully created, I'll stop my VM, edit the VM and go into the network settings, change the address. Okay, so I'll go into my VM. Um, I'll stop this VM. Once this is stopped, uh, I'll click on the edit button and go to the network settings. Within the network interfaces, I'll click on the default IPv4. Then go down the external IPv4 address. Uh, I'll reserve a static IP address. Let's give it a name. Once that is done, save the changes.
so now we'll be starting the instance now we have a static ip reserved and for those of you who want to route it via your domain the next step is applicable for you otherwise um, um, others can skip it copy the external ip and go into your domain provider so i am using namecheap right so uh, i'll go into my domain click the manage button now um, I'll, I'll go into the advanced dns of this domain click uh, add new record uh, i want to give a subdomain as well which will be test n810.assuchai.com um, it will route to my vn instance address cool so now once the n810 instance is successfully created this domain will point it to the n810 uh, address now for the firewall rules uh, we want to open ports for n810 n810 uses 5678 and 5679 we need to open these ports for that we have to go inside the vpc network now i'll search for vpc network click on firewall create a firewall rule give it a name call instances um, in the network and then copy the ipv4 range that we have uh, copied this means it will be allowed from all ipv4 instances i'll add the port 5678 which are used by n10 once done click on create now the firewall rule is done now the next step is to connect your vm via ssh go back to the compute engine go to your vm instances and find the n10 instance that we just created click on ssh now within the VM instance, I've clicked on uh, connect to SHH and we have to run these commands. The VM is connected now. Let me copy paste those commands. All right. So now the Docker is uh, successfully installed and now I need to give permission to Docker so I don't have to use sudo every time, right? Um, I'll reconnect my VM, run Docker version to check if Docker is successfully installed. Um, yes, Docker is successfully installed. Perfect. Uh, next step is to set up the Postgres SQL database. No need to worry, it is again very straightforward. We need a database because any time needs to store its data. You can skip this, but I do not recommend skipping an SQL database. If you want to update any time and move your migration, it will be very difficult to do without this database. Um, it is very straightforward to set up. Just follow it step by step. Go to your cloud console search for cloud sql um, if this api is not enabled you will get the option to enable it otherwise go to cloud sql select postgres and then click on enterprise then send box because we need a minimum configuration Um, give it an instance ID and password, save it. It will take some time, so I'm fast forwarding it. It will take about you know, five to six minutes. Now the instance is set up, let's set up a user, give it a name and a password.
let's set up a database now uh, correct so database and user are now done now we give our vm access to this database copy the uh, static ip address of our vm instance and within connection go to networking paste the static ip once it is done our vm can now access this database Now it's time to deploy the init end. There are two options. First, deploy without a domain. If you are doing that, use the first command. Because we have added a domain, we'll use a second command. So if you're doing it without a domain, then the last line, init and secure cookie is equals to false, should be enabled. Otherwise, you won't be able to access init end directly from the VM instance external IP. So by default, it is set to true. You will not run the first command as you're setting up a domain. If you don't have a domain you and you have to access the external IP, use the first one and you are done. For those who are setting up with a domain, there is one or one additional step after this, right? So now I'll copy this uh, code and paste it into the code editor and change the value one by one. Database type is Postgres, the Postgres. Uh, let me go and check the database name. It's anytime. I'll change the Postgres DB host. Postgres DB host is in the overview page of your DB instance. Just copy the public IP address and paste it in the public host. Just change all these values, right? The anytime host is the domain name in my scenario for those without a domain. Uh, you can either skip it or add a VM instance of GCP. Now the code is ready, copy it, paste it, run it. It will download and set up init and for us. Um, it's done now. Um, it's, it's done now. Uh, there are some Docker commands I've written below this document. For example, Docker PS will show if our container was successfully installed. I'll, I'll type Docker PS and yes, our container is installed and running. Now let's go to our external IP and see if we are able to access anytime and uh, add the port 5678. You can see that we are getting the error anytime secure cookie should be false. If we are running from the IP address of our VM instance. So we need to add that code, the first uh, Docker code, which I explained earlier, right? But because we are setting up via domain. So the next step is to install caddy. Right. So, Caddy will act as a reverse proxy to handle HTTPS. You will get an HTTPS certificate. Um, we can add any app we want and we will get a secure certificate. Right. So, copy these commands one by one and paste them into the terminal and you will be able to install Caddy. Once this is done, we need to create a caddy file. Write this command to create one.
So once it is created, replace your domain with your actual domain. This will create a reverse proxy. So all the requests coming from here route to the local host where are edited instances installed. I will change your domain to my domain, which is testinitin.shaa.com. Once I restart Caddy uh, and I go to this, you can see that an instance has popped up. The certificate is valid and you can see a secure sign here. Let me create an account and fill these questions. Um, now you can explore and attend, create or use our templates, for example, AI agents that is given here, create your workflows, right? So with this, um, we have successfully installed and attend. If you have any doubts, do let me know. Um, I'll also paste this step-by-step -step guide in the description box. Let me know if you face any issues. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll reply in the comments, right? Thank you and uh, see you in the next video.